you in life, but this is a perfect example. It's like, you got to try different things. You know, I mean, I even tattooed at one point. I did, I've done all <laughs> kinds of art and I was always open to just trying different things. Um, but yeah, it really helped teach me to have like, kind of uh, what would like, just kind of be like freer with my art. Mm-hmm. Welcome to the Crossing It Off Podcast, where we believe living with intention through a bucket list lifestyle is a great way to bring yourself personal joy. As you are crossing items off your list, you're actually filling up your bucket. The more items you cross off, the more joy gets added, until eventually your joy spills over into the lives of those around you. Now, let's start crossing it off together. All right, today I've got a very special guest. Her name is Amy Berkman. She's a live art entertainer with a passion for helping others. Amy, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. Awesome. What is the item you crossed off your list? I made a goal for myself to raise a million dollars for charity uh, through art. And I crossed that off last year. I think it was last year. Yeah. No, actually the year before that, because now we're in 22. So it was in 2019. I crossed that off. Yeah. It does does take some effort to remember what (laughs) what year it is nowadays. How long did it in total take you to to raise that million dollars? It was, a, let's see, it was around, let me get my year straight here. Uh, I think, oh my gosh, I think it was 2016 or so or 17 when I was like, okay, you know, it was the first time I ever had an assistant because I was starting, I was, you know, I, I quit my day job. I was starting to work full time and I realized like, I need help. I can't do this by myself. And I was growing and we were sitting down. We're like, okay, what are our goals? And I'm like, you know, I would love, I was, I kind of just threw it out. I was like, I just want to, I want to raise maybe a million dollars for charities. It almost seemed impossible in a way, but I was like, that is a great goal to work towards. Most definitely. And so it took you about two years. How long have you been a professional artist before that point? Um, I've been a professional artist for, um, probably 15 years in total. Because okay. I was doing murals and stuff like that before, and then eventually got into live art entertainment. Um, what was going on in your life besides you know, you're, you've left your job, you're going into this full time? Was there anything else that that specifically spoke to you to say, I'm going to do this for charity? You know, I even when I was young, I was always very sensitive to the struggles and hardships of others, um, people and animals. Um, so I knew early on. Actually, I thought I wanted to be a veterinarian, um, (laughs) but I'm a very sensitive person, so I don't think that would have worked out for me. I kind of knew that in the back of my head, and then it was actually, I had a moment where I went on a run. This was probably in, gosh, 2007 or so. Mm -hmm. Um, I was on a run, and I remember seeing a homeless person sitting on the sidewalk, and he looked really sad, and I was running by him, and I was like, man, I wish I could just draw him a picture and cheer him up. And then that thought, I feel like you get the best thoughts sometimes when you're exercising or running, (laughs) but that was one of my good thoughts. I was like, I was like, wow, that's what I want to do. I want to do art to help others, but I just didn't know how I would do that. I imagined I would volunteer at children's hospitals and do art with kids. That's kind of where that idea started. So you put this, you put this goal on your list. What were some of the things that you had to do in your, in your art world, your professional life and your personal life to kind of start making this happen? What were some of the things you did to accomplish the task? I think I was kind of already doing it before I set that goal. Mm. Um, But mainly it was really, I, at that point, I was just trying to get my name out there. And also I didn't, my focus was less on how much money am I going to make? My focus was more on how many people can I help people and animals? I want to say both, but like, (laughs) How many organizations can I help? I should say, and no matter how big or how small they were, I was willing to, you know, donate my time or or do what I can. I mean, it started off where I was just doing the smallest things, um, but just getting in front of people. And that always led into something else. And I realized the value of that. Yeah. I think it was just, my focus was just get in front of people, show them what I can do. Cause I knew that was going to lead into another job. And it always, even the smallest jobs are or events that I did that I was like, well, that didn't, there was like 50 people showed up. I was like, that wasn't that great, but, but it led into something else, something bigger. And, you know, I think the one that I'm thinking of, it led into something else. And that very next event that I did, um, because of this, I ended up raising $10,000 for a charity. So it's, 
I was just open to doing anything. And I just, you know, quit my job. That was one part of it. And I did this full time. So I was able to use a hundred percent of my time and energy towards these events. So when you, when you made this goal, did you have to change the medium and your art style? Did you, did you do anything? You said you did murals before, and then now you talk about doing entertainment art. What's, what was the difference? And can you explain how you go about doing art performance now? Yeah, it actually changed my art quite a bit. Um, but I've always been, I, I've always loved trying different, you know, mediums or, um, styles, you know, back before I started doing murals, it was really interesting. Cause I was, I love to draw, I love to be very detailed. And, um, and when I started painting murals, um, I had an apprenticeship with this guy that was doing murals and he was like, you need to hold your paintbrush like a brush and not like a pencil. And I would try to be so perfect. Then speed painting was even, it was, it was awesome because then I learned to like accept the painting as it is. Cause you have to do it within a certain amount of time. I was looser with my brush strokes, which was hard for me at first, but I think anything you do in life, but this is a perfect example. It's like, you got to try different things. You know, I mean, I even tattooed at one point I did, I've done all <laughs> kinds of art and I was always open to just trying different things. Um, but yeah, it really helped teach me to have like kind of, uh, what would like, just kind of be like freer with my art. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so basically what speed painting taught me was just to um, be a little looser and freer with my brush strokes and um, yeah, kind of just, uh, there was just a little more freedom there. It, it wasn't trying to be so perfect, which I used to be. I wanted everything exactly, okay, this needs to be exactly like this, but the, the speed painting, you have to do it within, you know, five, 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. So you kind of just have to accept it how it is. So can you explain the speed painting a little bit? I'm going to put some links in the show notes so that people can see some YouTube videos of you doing your work, which is, I just think is absolutely fascinating. There's a video of you doing a, a portrait of, of a couple at their wedding. And I just thought that that was oh. incredible. So can you explain you. what that kind of is and that, what the experience of the people there get while, while you're doing this form of art? Yeah, so speed painting, um, again, it happens in usually less than 10 minutes. I think on average, my paintings are probably five, six minutes. And, um, but yeah, a lot of times people don't even know what to expect. There's, you know, I have music, um, usually the music's energetic um, or emotional, depending on what I'm doing. And at first it looks like a mess. So people are like, what is she doing? I mean, I'm like, <laughs> so like, I thought you were messing up, but I didn't think you were going to finish in time. Um, but it looks like a mess. And a lot of times I will hold off the reveal as long as possible at the very end. But the final details, I might do it upside down and flip it over. And people see, oh my gosh, it's the, the wedding or the, the couple or it's an animal or, you know, a musician right. or something. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's incredible what you do. How did you learn how to do that style of art? Did you and did you specifically go and find a training for it because of what you wanted to do with this goal? Well, at that time, there was a guy doing this at the San Diego Zoo. So Denny Dent is the original speed painter. He started doing this in the 90s. And then, um, um, and then there was a guy doing this at the San Diego Zoo. And he needed a couple other artists because they wanted someone doing it every single day. So he trained me and a couple of other artists Mm. to do this live painting. We would educate the audience on endangered species, which I'm a huge animal lover. So I'm like, this is awesome. So we got to talk about elephants and tigers and paint them and bring kids up on stage. It was kind of a dream for me to be able to do something like this. Um, So that's why I learned how to do live art, but I was already, you know, trying to figure out how I'm going to do art to help others. So as soon as I started doing this, I was like, oh, this is it. This is I can see the potential here. So, so I went to the Van Gogh experience a couple months ago. Oh, cool! And, and he was he he finished his life penniless <laughs> and no money, and here you are having raised a million dollars in a couple of years. So, explain what that process looks like. How you go about? You know, do you pick the charities? Do you, do you just sell your work and then donate? How does that work? It all depends. Um, the bigger, the kind of the bigger events, they are, they already have a budget for entertainment. Mm-hmm. So sometimes they'll just pay a flat fee and then they get to keep a hundred percent of the proceeds from the painting. And the great thing is the painting sell for thousands of dollars. Right. Um, so, you know, they essentially get me for free because they make their money back plus they make, mm-hmm. or there's a lot of times somebody will sponsor me. So they'll pay for my time. 
and the organization gets to keep 100%. And then what I've done for some of the smaller organizations um, who may not have a budget and they're they're not really sure how it's going to go, I'll just do a percentage split with them. So at least, mm -hmm. but the thing is, I'm usually confident that I'm going to be able to sell at a, at a certain price. So at least we'll make up for my time, but then they get to make money too. So it's always a win-win situation. We always work with them and try to be flexible. So yeah, so it pays for my time and for theirs. And how do you pick the organizations that you work with? They kind of pick me, honestly. But okay. I mean, there's been a few where we've reached out to them because I love, I want to work with them. Right. Um, when it, when it, and I say they usually pick me because they'll see me at an event and they're like, oh, we have a fundraiser. We would love to have you. So that's typically how I get work. Um, performing is how I market, basically. They see me there and they're like, right. oh, I want this event. But uh, there's been a few where we've reached out to them just because. Like, for example, I love orangutans. And um, when COVID first started, we were trying to get creative. Like, obviously, I couldn't perform in front of an actual audience. So we're, we're thinking, like, can we help people virtually and do online events? So um, we were, reached out to the um, orangutan project and we did a couple events with them online. But um, so that was cool. And so we'll re typically we'll reach out to mostly animal related events, but, you know, children's hospitals, stuff like that, too. Here at the Crossing It Off podcast, we are passionate about inspiring you in your bucket list lifestyle and empowering you to live out your list. We offer many resources to assist you in your bucket list journey, such as web resources in the show notes, bucket list mentoring services, my book, Live Out Your Lists, a private Facebook group for you to share your bucket list success stories with others, and more. All of these can be found at crossingitoffpodcast.com. Find the resource that fits your need so that you can live out your list. Now back to the show. The last couple sentences you've shared, you've said we. So I know you have oh. the Good Art Project. So can mm -hmm. you explain what that is and, and how you work with some others to help accomplish this, this, this goal of yours? Yep. So the Good Art Project was started um, the right when COVID started, unfortunately. So we haven't been able to do as much as we've wanted to yet. but. Um, the, it's kind of similar to what I'm doing now, but the goal is to bring on other artists and um, just basically do more of what I'm doing is, um, you know, bring on other artists and help organizations all over the world and just have more people assisting me with that um, and raising money. Or it might be to something that we've been working on is we want to do more murals. So um, I went to West Africa in 2010 and I did, um, my friend and I started a program called Educate Through Art. And so we went to different parts of West Africa and painted educational murals, like health-related educational murals. So I want to do more right. of those, that type of art as well, where we're creating art to inspire or educate people. So did you did you start this, the, the Good Art Project? And, and is there, like, is it a full-on 501c3 nonprofit or how's it, how's it, it operate? Is. Yep, it's a 501c3, and uh, we got that all set up, and we have done some fundraisers so far, So, um, and I may be using some of those funds to do a mural in Thailand for an elephant sanctuary, nice. so that's something that um, we're probably going to use that first, you know, that, that income that we receive from that, um, that'll probably be our first project, but we're looking to do more stuff like that, where we're doing murals and maybe bringing in, again, like young artists, yeah, so that's kind of the goal. So since reaching this goal, have you set a new goal as far as raising money or is, or have you moved on from this? I mean, I know you've got the Good Art Project, but it's like for you personally, is there a new goal? I mean, really, that is that uh, that is our new goal. Um, it's not, we don't have a set amount that we're aiming for. Mm -hmm. We just are going to keep raising money, of course. But I think the new goal is just to bring on, again, more artists. But another thing too is, um, is, you know, work with, you know, I just want to get my name out there even more and work with even like, you know, bigger names basically who are doing incredible work to help make this world a better place. So, you know, like Jane Goodall, some of that comes to mind, you know, anything that she's related to, like any events that she might be involved with, it'd be really cool to do something with her, um, stuff like that. So that's the goal is just to continue to grow, add on more artists, raise more money, create amazing murals, stuff like that. So besides besides the good the good art project, if someone was talking to you and you're just having a conversation over coffee and they said, "I have 
this gift is not art. It's something else, right? I have this skill and this ability, and I want to use it to raise a million dollars for, for charity. What would that piece of advice that you would look across that table and say, okay, you got to make sure that you blank, what's the fill in the blank? Yeah, I would say just, you know, put, get your, put yourself out there. And, you know, even if you have to, you know, even no matter, no matter if it's art or music or whatever gift you have to contribute, you might want to do a couple events for free to start just so you can get in front of people and get used to it. And um, but that's what I would say is like, and no matter how big or small, you know, because some people are just like, man, I don't want to do something for 20 people. This seems like a joke kind of, but it's right. like, you should just put yourself out there and just try it. And you never know what that's going to lead to. Someone's going to see that and they're going to be like, wow, you're really talented or I love your music or whatever. And then they might hire you for something else. Yeah. It's networking. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's super important. Just like you're yeah. here, you're here because I interviewed somebody else and asked them if you know anybody that you think this would be a good thing. Let me know, and they did. So I, I understand yeah. networking is a, a positive thing you need to be doing, no matter what it is you're engaged with. And um, I know exactly what you're talking about, and she's such a good example of that. She, I feel like, knows everybody and <laughs> builds people up. She's amazing. <laughs> That's for sure. Right, a good time talking with her. So besides raising money for charity with your art, what is the next thing in, in building the Good Art Project? What, what's the next thing on your bucket list that you want to cross off? Um, regarding, oh, are you saying like, I'm sorry. Just anything. Just anything? Yeah. Okay, so since I, I'm such a huge animal lover and um, well, two years ago, I got to meet elephants and I went to the elephant sanctuary and that was one of the best things I've ever done in my life. Um, but I think, a bucket list item for me i would love to meet an orangutan i'd love to especially you know i worked with the orangutan project but it would be a dream to go to one of these facilities help them raise money but then be able to meet one of these amazing animals i think that would be a bucket you, list item do you have like a specific <laughs> sanctuary you're thinking about or, or one that you'd like i'm always open but since i've worked with the orangutan project probably that okay. group they're awesome i love them where are I they out them. of um i believe I want to say, I feel like they're kind of scattered all over, but I feel like they're in Australia with the, the people that I talked to, but I, I can't remember why they're based out of there. Cause I don't think that's where their sanctuary is. We did again, this all virtually. So right. I right. don't know exactly, but yeah, wherever right. it is, I'll go, I'll go and. Them. <laughs> so where was the, where was the elephant sanctuary? Was that in Thailand? Yep. That was in Chiang Mai, Thailand. Chiang Mai. Mm -hmm. Yep. And how'd you oh, get connected with them? They're basically somebody saw me perform for another event and they hired me to raise money for the elephant sanctuary and the founder of that sanctuary she is incredible her name is Lek and she's rescued over 10,000 animals and it's she's wow. I feel like she's like the mother Teresa of animals I love her so much <laughs> so she saw me perform for their event she came you know she lives in Thailand but she came to California I performed and raised money and um, she was like, please come. I want you to stay with us. And I'm like, absolutely. I'm definitely going to come. So months later, I flew to Thailand and stayed with them for a couple of weeks and did, I did a mural for them and everything. So it was, it was awesome. What's one thing on your bucket list that is completely different than art and raising money and animals was what's, what's something that's completely different than those things? It's hard. It's hard. Cause even if I were to say another bucket list, it, it is still regarded related to animals I've always wanted to have my own little sanctuary mm -hmm. and maybe like you know adopt a cow or rescue a cow or a couple of cows <laughs> like that would be my dream maybe but um you know I have my own personal like bucket list items too I've you know I've always kind of put myself last and that's something I'm mm -hmm. better at right now is like putting having a better balance of that where I'm putting myself in so sure. My goal is to get into good shape. And that's kind of been my, that's kind of like a bucket list item for me. Good. Just right. self-care. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We all need that, especially these days. Yeah. So where can folks find out more information about you and your art and the Good Art Project? Um, the best place to go is amyberkman.com. Yep. And that, there's a link also for Good Art Project on there as well. Yeah. But then people can see videos and my portfolio. Great. And we'll put that in yeah. the show link, the show notes so that folks can get that really easily. Amy, thank you so much. Congratulations on crossing this off your list. I think it's awesome. Um, it's one of the joys of my show is that I get to talk to people that 
do small things like learn how to tap dance and then people that do amazing things like you and and uh raise a million dollars for charity i wish you all the best in your, your oh. future work and if there's ever anything we can do for you let us know thank you so much and on it was so great to be a part of this podcast and uh learning about your story too and everything <laughs> and the fact that I mean, we have very similar stories with you know facing a health thing and then yep. realizing there's more important things to spend your time doing. So congratulations to you too. Thanks. <laughs>